Well, what's going on, Gideon's Tactical Family, and thanks for joining me on another Blade video. And if you're watching this video, it may be a Blade emergency. You have a last minute gift you want to hook somebody up with, but you're on a budget and time's of the essence. Well, I got two ideas for you today. The CJRB Feldspar and CRJB Gobi. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video where I have a secret competitive option available that's gonna come around the same price, but be completely different than these two CJRBs. Now there are several reasons why these make perfect emergency gift ideas, or if you're just in the market for a budget-friendly pocket knife, but you want a lot of bang for that buck. So I picked these up a while back and I paid $30 on sale for the Feldspar and 35 for the Gobi. And before I share some of the more technical details of these designs, let me hit a few reasons why this is an easy gift idea. Both are fully ambidextrous, so you don't need to remember if they're right or left-handed. They have ambidextrous pocket clips that are completely reversible, tip up, loop over, recess screws, and with the finger flipper on the Gobi and matching ambidextrous thumb studs. I'm shooting this out left-handed, even though I'm a righty and liner locks that are easily disengaged by a left-handed person and both running on ball bearings. And it's easy to deploy as well as disengage the lock, but still giving you a solid lockup. There are a lot of color combinations as well. I got this kind of purple blue on the Feldspar and I've got the Jade on the Gobi. And as someone myself who likes to have a few blades on hand to gift people who I meet or just friends or family members, that I forgot about uh, an important event, birthday, you know, whatever it may be, I have a few blades like this on hand, ready to go, that they're gonna be pleased with, but that doesn't break the bank. So as I'm about to dive into the finer details, I will have a bunch of hyperlinks for you below, not only over to Amazon and our affiliate link program and our Gideon's Tactical store, but also over to our affiliates like Blade HQ, Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and GP Knives, just to name a few. So if these blades or just gear in general make sense for you, appreciate it when you use the hyperlinks provided below. Now, size also is a good factor with both of them having nice full large handles. The Feldspar tends to be a little bit bigger, more rounded, wider in the handle and a wider blade with a saber grind and about a 3.3 inch blade if I remember off the top of my head. Whereas the Gobi is going to have that trailing point, really cool, wicked design and a full flat grind and is one of the better slicers I've used this year just because of the edge uh, grinding as well as the blade sweep and geometry. And that value is gonna be shown in two different kind of interesting ways. Now, basic D2, we know that now at this point in time for overseas produced knives, the CJRB brand is owned and under the Artisan Cutlery brand that was founded in 2018 that is based in the US and then they manufacture their blades over in China. So D2 steel on this model, which has been performing well and is definitely an upgrade over the 8CRs and 7CRs that are often in this price range. But the Gobi is a little different. They're rocking a new blade steel that they have been offering, which is the AR RPM9 steel. And what they say is that it has what they were attempting to do, the best properties of Sandvik 14C28N and D2. So it's a blending basically of those two steels. I've only had it on two of their knives over the last six months. Uh, I've seen mixed results with some of you commenting that you love it, some of you saying that it wasn't holding quite as good as Edge as D2. From my personal experience on this model, I would say it's a little bit more rust resistant than uncoated D2, but is holding about the same edge as those overseas produced D2 steel blades that you would see, which again is still an upgrade over OS 8 and 8CR type of steels. But it is interesting to see a new steel design from a manufacturer like this. Now the graining of the G10 is really cool, almost looks like wood. It's nice that it's just not like some synthetic polymer that's, you know, I mean, obviously G10 is that, but, um, you know, just a plastic. And these have steel liners in both, and they are both going to be milled out. So they're not overly heavy and bulky, and that just shows an extra layer of detail. And speaking of detail, it's just cool that they have these different colored collars 
around the pivot. Again, having the features of a much more expensive pocket knife. So it feels like a lot more that you're getting for the money and stands out from just a very generic, basic, you know, black handle, satin blade, here you go, enjoy. There's a lot of little accents to the designs, flow through construction on both, you know, color palette on the Gobi that's going to match whatever pivot collar you went with. And there's lots, again, color combinations. The recessed screws with the deep uh, loop over pocket clip, all of that. The tip is buried well in the Gobi and even more so in the fel Feldspar, I think is how you say it, Feldspar. So that's good with excellent detents. I mean, these are not coming out, but are easily overcome when you decide to do that and disengage, get over the detent ball, close, get over the detent ball and close. Average size stop bars back there. So the blades will be nice and secure when they open up and solid liner locks that engage as they should with milling on the sides. So that's not sharp, but still plenty to grab onto and disengage the blade. And I do just like the lines, very classic with the feldspar. I love that kind of leaf shape design, good saber grind and just good edge geometry, very easy to work with. And then again, just that nice full handle fills out the hand very nicely. And then kind of the more slim, sleek, speed, high speed, um, excellent symmetry on the Gobi right there. So the styling is, is absolutely there as well. And again, gonna be <clears throat> on average between like 35 and $45, just depends on the model. And I have tested a few other CJRB blades as well that I've been pleased with overall. They got one with their, I believe, recoil lock that I was not super impressed with that particular locking mechanism. So I would stick with button locks or liner locks for the most part. But overall, not only these two models, but also a few of their other designs that I've tested and used, I've been very pleased with, and you're getting a lot for the money. Now I gotta run in a secret competitive option that would be a great choice as well, that's budget friendly. You can get real quick and has a couple variants. And it's the Kershaw Cargo and Debris Series. The Debris is the smaller one at under three inches. The Cargo that I have is 3.2 inches overall D2 steel, made in China as well. But these are gonna have lockback designs. They're gonna be slimmer. Uh, and they are both gonna have loop over deep ride uh, recessed screws as well and come in around 40 bucks, 40 to $45 easily. Sometimes you can get them on sale for even under 40 bucks. So uh, with all the designing, it really, they, they are similar, these, this cargo and debris, to the Andela and Delica um, Spydercos. They have a very similar vibe and feel to them, but you're gonna pay half the price. So uh, these are great alternatives as well. So these two models have definitely become a go-to for me as an option to gift other knife lovers in my life. But I wanna hear from you guys. What's your thought, your experience with CJRB and artisan cutlery? Uh, have you had other success with other models? Are there other models you'd like me to test out and review? They got some really wild, unique designs. Uh, and I always appreciate those comments. I invite you guys to subscribe if you're not yet a subscriber. Check out the other video popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.